Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk to you about hiding information that is not relevant to the current user. To do that, I'm going to use the phone messages application that I built in previous demos. As you see here, I have one phone call for Antonio and another one for Hannah here. So when Hannah logs in, she should see her phone calls and when Antonio logs in, he should see his. So that can be done in several ways. The easiest way is simply modifying the view. And you do that by, of course, clicking here, all items, edit current view, and then you filter and only show those items where the called is equal to me. As you see, that, that option is one of the two ones. They have the today or the me. Those are the only two available filters that, that work like that. So if you do that and click OK, you'll see that there are no phone messages for me, Peter Kalmström, who I'm logged in as. But if I open another browser and log in as Antonio and go to the same SharePoint site, the team site one here, where I have my phone messages, click into phone messages, you'll see that that works beautifully. I'm logged in as Antonio and I'm seeing my phone call. So that works as it should. However, you should note that this is now convenience. This is not security, what I'm doing here. If I go into one of the other views, like group by called, where I didn't put that filter, I can still see the phone call that Stina called Hannah. I can still see all the phone calls. If I'm really after security, not just convenience. So the convenience, that's what I did here in the all items view. You can, of course, do filtering on all the views and making it harder for people to get at those items which are hidden by the view. But if they have the URL or something like that, then they can still get to those other items. If, if what you're really after is the security, then I'm going to show you how to do that too. So I'll go back to the group by call here, and then I'm going to set permissions on this particular item. You can have unique permissions on each item. So if I go into share on that particular item, click on shared with, and then go into advanced. As you see, this particular phone message now has the same permission as the KDemo 14 site. So everyone can see all the team site visitors and team site members can of course see this item. So what I can do is stop inheriting permissions on this item and then uh, remove all the existing permissions, remove those, and then grant permission to the item that you're working with. This was of course the Stina Stinson item. So I'm going to grant permission to Hannah to see that one, but only Hannah can see that. So now we have in um, my phone messages, we still have two items, which I can see if I'm going in here to group by calls. And the reason I can see both of them, even though I set unique permissions on this, is that I, Peter Kalmström, logged in on the site and the site collection administrator, so I can see everything that's in my site, even though this item is only shared with me. Now, if I go back to the other browser where I'm logged in as Antonio and um, go back to this view, now the group by called and refresh the page, you'll notice that I can no longer see Hannah's phone message there. So now we have security. Now we have item level security. Now, of course, that was quite a few clicks setting the unique permissions on each item, right? So in order to make this simpler, or at least faster to work with, I'm going to create a workflow that does that for me. So I'm going to go into SharePoint Designer and uh, open my site. Go demo 14. That's the one I'm working on now. And log in as myself. And I'm going to go into my list and libraries and look at my phone messages. And there I'm going to create a new workflow, a list workflow. And I'm going to call that set permissions. And I'm going to do that as a SharePoint 2010 workflow. It doesn't work on the 2013. There, my 2010 workflow has been created. 
I'm going to go in to the properties of that and say that this workflow should start automatically when an item is created or changed. I'm going to edit the workflow again. And in this step now, uh, as you see in the actions, it does not have anything regarding permissions. So I need to step outside of that step and create an impersonation step. The difference between a regular step and an impersonation step is that this step always runs as the author, the one who edited the workflow, that is me. And I have permissions to change permissions on the items, which not all users may have. I set my cursor inside the impersonation step. And now when I go into actions, I can set the permissions. Replace list item permission. And what I want, I want to replace all permissions. I want the called person to be able to edit the item, but nobody else should see it. I'm going to replace all the permissions with a workflow lookup for the user and get the current item called that person is going to be able to edit. The following permissions will replace all existing permissions. So the current item called he or she will have edit permissions. No other permissions will remain there. And of course, I want the current item to be the affected one there. Now I should be able to remove this one. Yes. So there we have in the impersonation step that replaces the current permissions. So uh, I'll publish that. I'll go back to the Antonio item, which of course now before the workflow has run, if I go into the share dialog, I see that this item is shared with everyone except external users. Now, if I change something in this, I'll just go in and edit it, edit this item, change the phone number and put a seven there. That's a change, of course. Go back to the phone messages. And I'm still logged in as me, so I can't see anything. But if I group by called, I'll see this one now. So after a while, we should see this workflow running. Let's try refreshing again. And we go into the share dialog with this now, shared with. And we see that this built-in account is still there, but now it's only Antonio that has the permission. So let's go into the sharing page and we'll see that only Antonio has the permission on this item. So that showed you three different ways of working with permissions or hiding content rather. And the first one was just working with the view. Second one was manually setting the permissions. And the third one was creating an impersonation step in a workflow to set the permissions automatically when an item is changed or, of course, added. Thank you for watching this demonstration.